Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today is part three of my current best makeup of 2023 series that I'm running here on my channel. Part one was foundations, concealers, powders. Part two was all about the cheeks, so bronzers, highlighters and blushes. And today we are doing uh, lip products, so a lot of lip products, uh, mascaras, brow products, eyeliners, that kind of a jazz. I'm still going to do a like favorite... Um, it's going to be like a favorite everything else video in the sense that it'll be like my favorite makeup brushes from the year and sponges and stuff, but I'll also incorporate some like perfumes and skincare in that one as well. And then my end of year palette ranking where I try, I rank all of the palettes that I have tried in 2023. Am I procrastinating on that one because it's such a big video? Yes, I am. Anyway, hopefully you want to stick around and keep watching. If you do, go ahead and do the YouTube things, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get into it. Everything will be linked in the description box down below for you guys. They are affiliate links, so if you shop through them, thank you so much. Much. I truly, truly appreciate it. Just a reminder that this is only products that I have tried from this year. So my last year's favorites, all that kind of stuff, they still stand. It's just this is new products to me this year and the favorite of those new products that I tried this year. This makeup look right here is coming up next week. It will be my second New Year's Eve like inspo look. Uh, on my eyes is a mix of the Glaminatrix Glimmering Creatures and the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette and on my lips is my good old faithful Natasha Denona My Dream Lip Trio if you're wondering and cannot wait for next week. I'm going to do the eye stuff first because I don't have as much of that and then we'll get into this massive lip section. Starting with eye primer, I only have one new eye primer that I tried this year that was incredibly memorable to me and I think definitely a fave and that is the Pat McGrath Labs eye primer. So this is the Intensifies Longwear Primer and I really enjoy this. It's this one right here. I've actually nearly gone through this so it doesn't seem to last very long. I don't know how much product is in here. Five mil. How much is in my Rare Beauty? Three mil. Interesting. So this has more product than my Rare Beauty, but I really feel like my Rare Beauty has been lasting longer than this one. Anyway, uh, lovely product. It really reminds me, basically same, same of the Rare Beauty, to be honest with you. Um, do you still need this and the Intensify stick if you have one or the other? Personally, I think the Intensify stick is a must-have regardless of what priming you have, but that's just me. Um, but I do really like the Pat Eye Primer. Uh, I would repurchase it probably on like one of her sales, right? Because like most of the time now we're not really buying Pat at full price, are we? Because she has so many sales. So in a sale, yeah, I would repurchase it for sure. I've tried a lot of mascaras this year, okay? Like a lot. I normally had this rule of like one max two mascaras open at a time. You should see how many mascaras I have open right now. I know. I know. But there were two mascaras that really stood out to me. And once I have culled through some of the many that I have open, I will absolutely repurchase both of these in the full size. The first one is the Raban, I think it's like five in one famous mascara or something. And then the other one is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang. Both of these have incredibly blown me away. My absolute, absolute fave is the Raban. So it has this kind of a wand right here. And the thing that I like about it is it doesn't, I don't want a uh, mascara that's going to give me length. Because I, I find when it gives me too much length, it gives me like spider leg kind of lashes. And I hate that. I hate spider leg lashes. I love this one because it just, it's like a, um, it's almost like a gimme brow for lashes in ways, if you will, where it just like kind of really thickens and plumps up my lashes in such a beautiful way. And don't get me wrong, it still gives me a lot of vavoom, but I just really like the way that it thickens and fluffs my lashes. And then pretty much the same as this Bad Girl Bang, this one has a different wand, but I also just love the way that this like thickens and plumps my lashes. And also I feel like the Bad Girl Bang almost pretty much like gives me false lashes. It's amazing. So I really love those two. And like I said, we'll hands down repurchase them. And then I still love my Victoria Back in Future Lash absolutely fave as well so if I was to like try no other mascaras I would probably just have those three and like circle them through. Normally I don't really talk about brow products in faves. I don't usually try a lot of brow products to be honest with you. I'm lucky enough to get sent quite a few in PR from Benefit and also I just find brows really boring but this year I did venture out a little bit. Now in terms of brow gels so if you've been around here before you know the gimme brow from Benefit is like one of my favorite kind of like 
fiber tint gels, if you will, for the brows. Um, but I actually think I found some that might peep it this year. So these are the two that I've been loving. This is the Hourglass Arch Fiber Brow Gel, Arch Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel in Soft Brunette. And this is the Refi Brow Tint, I think it's called. Deep Brown Brow Tint, yeah. So the Refi one is the one that I've had the most, like the longest out of all of them. And it's the little toilet brush one. So I don't know if you can see it there. And I really, really love the way that this, because the brush has this like plasticky kind of like spoolie thing, it like, as you like fluff it through the brows, it kind of like separates and feathers them up in a really nice way. And then it also adds a beautiful like dark tint to the brows. And I find when I use this, I don't need as much like brow pencil or whatever I'm using through the brows because it has such a beautiful dark tint to it. So yeah, I really, really love that one and would absolutely repurchase it. Same with this Hourglass Fiber one. I love the wand of this and it just, it behaves pretty much like the Hour, uh, the Benefit Gimme Brow, but it just fluffs them up a little bit more. And I really enjoy that in this one as well. So I would also repurchase this. I think I only tried like two new brow pencils this year. And this one, when I first tried it, I was like, oh no, I'm not sure about this, but I honestly love and adore this now. This is the Victoria Beckham Brow Pencil. It's amazing. I truly love it. So it is very, very small. I don't know if that's going to focus. See how thin and small that is? It is absolutely teeny tiny. It is so highly pigmented. And that was the thing that I wasn't sure about when I first tried this. You definitely need to like go in with a light hand. But you can like barely touch your brows at all and just like do little um, hair strokes finely and you don't have to touch your brows hardly at all for it to really pay off with the pigment. But I just, I don't know what it is. I've just really come to love this, like the way that it shapes and the way that it like, the tone of the tone of it and the way that it disperses the pigment and stuff, I just find it really quick and easy to do my brows with it. So yeah, again, I would hands down repurchase this once I've gone through it. I also ventured out in my clear brow gels because I can't even remember what one I was using. Anyway, I ventured out. This is the Too Faced one. Did I have this last year and it was in a faves? Who knows? I feel like this is new though. So I got the Too Faced Fluff and Hold brow gel and I absolutely love this. It is nearly empty. Um, will I repurchase this? Probably because honestly it is, it's like the Patrick Ta lamination gel, but I find the Patrick Ta lamination gel like one, it's really, really hard to get off at the end of the day. And two, it's almost like too stiff. It just like crunches in the brows. So I love the way that this one kind of like fluffs and feathers the brows and really holds them up in place, but like doesn't like make it so hard and like crunchy. And then this is the Make Brow Gel. And it's basically the same uh, kind of effect as the Too Faced one where it just like fluffs them up, holds them lovely. I really like the brush and... Just find it does a really, really solid job. So yeah, I really, really like this one. Out of the two, what would I pick? Probably the Make at this point in time, but I do like both and I like having a couple in my collection for variety. So yeah, I definitely have been pleasantly surprised by them. Some eyeliners that I have really enjoyed trying this year. Definitely the Lisa Aldridge eyeliners. I basically honestly find them to be very, very similar to the Victoria Beckham ones. I just got black and brown, like very boring colors. But these are a lot creamier, I will say. Um, the Lisa ones, like, definitely a lot creamier than the Victoria Beckham ones. But the thing that I love about these is I can put these on and they do not irritate my sensitive eyes at all. Even if I'm working at a computer all day, they are just completely fine and I just love them. I'm excited to see her exp expand the shade range of those. The other one I really liked, and this didn't irritate my eyes at all either, is the House Labs eyeliner. And this is in the say, uh, shade Sage. And it's absolutely stunning. Like, look at that absolutely beautiful shade. I love it. It's like this minty, mossy green. And again, didn't irritate my sensitive eyes. And I really love the shade range of those. And then lastly, the Natasha Denona Macrotech Eye Crayon. This came out with the um, Yucca palette. And I, I just really love this shade. See this one? Like, it's like this beautiful orangey kind of yellow shade. But also doesn't irritate my eyes. I also got like the acidy green one, yellowy one that came out with it. But that one does slightly ever so slightly irritate my eyes like I can't wear that to say like work all day on the computer or drive me nuts whereas with these ones I can so yeah highly recommend these now for some single shadows I think I only tried one 
new cream eyeshadow formula this year, I think, but also out of the cream eyeshadows that I have. I absolutely love this formula. I really do. So this is the Raban Color Shot little cream eyeshadow. Um, it's called Cream to Paint Pearly Liquid Eyeshadow. I got the shade Moonchild. They actually have like three different finishes. This is the only finish I have so far. And I've used this a few times off camera just as like a one and done. And it's really lovely. So first of all, the shade. I mean, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous shade, absolutely gorgeous shade. But I really like this one because you can really like sheer this particular formula out. So it's just a really soft wash of color on the lids or you can build it up to be quite opaque. Um, either which way when I've worn it like that and haven't set it, it hasn't really creased or anything or like been greasy or anything on my eyes, which is nice because they are hooded. So that does happen. I also like using this as like a base underneath metallic shadows. So I didn't do it on today's look, but for example, if I wanted to, I could have put this down first. Uh, on my eyes and then put the shadow that I used over the top and it would just like really set and enhance and add a little extra something, you know, a little something um, to the look. So again, I say it all the time, Raban is being slept on. One of the best releases of this year, hands down, was the Glaminatrix Glimmering Creatures Bundle 1, like one of the best releases. These are some high quality shadows, high quality. I'm wearing this shade all over the lids with this shade on the inner corner here right now today. This is Minka. You can buy these separately or in the bundle. <sighs> I love them so much. I also have a discount code for Glaminatrix if you're wondering. It's linked, It's in the description box down below for you guys. Uh, I love these. These are such high, high quality quality shadows and you can just see they're just like this like creamy wet molten metallic and then I have had you guys ask me between these ones and like the fairy lights what's the difference the fairy lights are a lot more like glitterly glitterly glittery and sparkly if you will whereas these ones as you can tell it's more like this like wet cream metallic without being a uh a cream shadow I absolutely love these. These live on my desk. I reach for them so, so often. And I just think what an exceptional formula. I love the shade range as well because it's just shades that we're all going to reach for every single day. Love them. This one, I finally, and I haven't, I did film a video with this and then just never got around to editing it. So I will do a video in January sometime. I finally picked up a Chantecaille single shadow. So this is the Lumescent Eye Shade uh, shimmering taupe gray in the elephant this one right here oh my lord i love this again it's kind of one of those shadows i've used a lot off camera look at it look at it oh my goodness i love it so much in fact layered over that raban cream eyeshadow it is impeccable you can like tap this on and it just adds a little sparkle and a little soft wash of color you can really build this up to be something impactful i get it I get why these shadows are, I guess, so hyped for Shantikai. They're quite stunning. They're quite stunning and quite special. And then lastly, this is a random one. And again, I know it's another one that you haven't seen on my channel, but one that I think is worth checking out. And this is the Flavado and Albedo single shadow in the shade. It's a velvet eyeshadow in the shade Cool Bronze, made in Italy. It was very, very affordable. You can get this at like Sephora and stuff, and I'm pretty sure you can get this in the US. I've seen them around. It's, and I think even Selfridges, it really is this velvety cream type shadow. See that? You can see I have a shade type, right? Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And I have used this again a lot off camera when I'm just doing like a quick one and done and I've got to get out the door for work or whatever. Absolutely gorgeous. I might have used this in a video actually, but anyway, it is gorgeous. And actually they have um, a blue matte, like sky blue matte that my mum loves and adores because that is her go-to eyeshadow like these are actually a really really good formula and really quite affordable for what they are for sure now for lips and there's quite a few okay so bear with me lip liners let's talk about these two first uh the tower 28 lip liners i have the shade work of art and fill me in um fill me in is the slightly pink one work of art is the slightly brown one and I love these. Uh, the thing that I like the most about these is even though they're a pencil, they're very, very creamy and easy to use. They don't feel dry or like tug at your lips as you apply them, which I love. They're very, very opaque, very pigmented, very long lasting and very, very affordable for the price, at least for an Australian. I tried my first Chanel lip liner. This is 158 and you also get this fancy little brush, lip brush on the end of it if you need to. 
And I love this one as well. Absolutely beautiful. So that was 158. The shades will be down below for you guys as well. Um, again, I love the way that it's pigmented. It's not too pigmented where you're just like nervous to put it on, but it isn't like going to tug on your lips or anything. You don't feel like you're having to like really work to get the pigment out. Doesn't bleed or anything. Stays for a really long time and just a beautiful shade. Very similar formula um, is the Dior. Probably maybe slightly less opaque in a good away kind of thing so this is Dior 100 very very similar so same kind of thing like creamy um, doesn't tug but goes on absolutely beautifully but I really like the Dior one because it isn't as opaque as the others so it's just quite easy to like just quickly throw on when you're in a rush you know like sometimes if a lip liner is too too opaque you know you're like oh gosh this is gonna end horribly but sometimes you need like just a slightly less opaque one so that you can throw it on in a rush and it's still gonna do its job you know if you know you know uh, Rare Beauty lip liners. Do not like their lipsticks. I, in fact, I don't think I've met a Rare Beauty lip product apart from their lip liners that I've liked yet, but their lip liners are awesome. So this is Lively. I specifically love the shade Lively because it's pretty much the color of my lips. So it's a really good lip liner for maybe if I have a lip color that I don't actually have a liner that matches it, or I just want like very close to my lip color, then this is perfect. Again, really long wearing, doesn't tug or dry out on the lips doesn't bleed absolutely perfect. I absolutely cannot for the life of me remember if I got the Mario lip liner for like last year, but just in case, the Mario lip liners are phenomenal. One of my favorite lip liner formulas, that's in the shade Toasty. I absolutely want more shades of these. Same reasons as the others, but it's just really long wearing and like just, it's just absolutely stunning. And especially that shade Toasty, it just goes so well with like all of my lip products pretty much. I just absolutely love it. Lipsticks. I, Lisa Aldridge obviously is always a massive fave of mine. Two shades that I picked up this year that I think deserve an honorable mention. So this is, uh, one is Decade, which is a true velvet. And the other is Le Mepri, which is a luxuriously lucent. So you have Decade. And Lemme Pre. Now, Decade, I just love as this like deep, vampy chocolate lip. Absolutely gorgeous. Like, it has a moment. And then Lemme Pre is like my everyday lip color in Lisa's formula. I love it. It is like one of those formulas that you can just throw on in the dark. You do need to keep reapplying it, it's a satin finish, but it's just such a flattering shade on me, and I freaking love it. The Hourglass Unlocked lipsticks, I also love these. They're a satin finish. You'll find most of my lipsticks, to be honest, are a satin finish because that's what I like. My criteria for a lipstick needs to be, I can put you on in the dark. I know you're not going to go all over my face. We are good to go. I want you to be a little bit moisturizing on the lips because I don't want butthole lips and I don't want dry lips. And I want to be able to eat my lunch and know that you're not like ridiculously all over my face, basically. <laughs> So I have the two hourglass ones here. This one's Oasis and Tide. I mean, you can see, again, I have a type. I love them. Perfect level of pigmentation where they're not crazy opaque, but they're not too sheer. Lovely to wear, moisturizing, easy to put on. Like, oh, they're just so impressive. I love this Dior lipstick. I got this from Mallory Brooke. This is uh, Dior Tartan. The perfect, like fall type lip color if you will autumn type lip color look at this you saw me i went through a real moment where i was wearing this in like nearly every video i also just do not own a color like this at all it is a little bit sheer though so i don't know if you can see like it does blend out to be a little bit sheer but that's also a good thing for me i don't necessarily want that color in too bold of a lip so i personally love it and it kind of tastes like sugar I know. Interesting. Oh my gosh. This lip product, I, it takes, it does take a lot, even though I have a lot here, it does take a lot for me to be wowed by a lip product because unless you're a lip gloss or lip oil, like I just, I don't know. I really go through my lip glosses and my lip oils more than I do like my lipsticks and stuff. But this one, this is the House Labs Monster Crayon or the Monster Crayon in Blush Matte. Oh my goodness. So that is it right there. Again, I want more shades of this and it's just like, it's a matte formula, but it doesn't give me like crazy butthole lips. It's still a comfortable matte formula where it doesn't dry out my lips, but it's longer wearing than the other lipsticks I have because it is more of a matte formula. I also just love the crayon. It's just so easy to apply. The shade's perfect. Like, I am so surprised by how much I love these. Like, I keep reaching for these. Lip cream that I, like, I just, I can't get enough of this, you guys. And, like, I was wearing this in my 
favorite foundation video and everything and it will be the lip combo I wear in my like my first New Year's Eve look uh, and you guys the amount of comments that are like what is on your lips like look combo is amazing it is this is one of the products this is clay de po uh, lip shine in Calanthe orchid absolutely amazing look at it right there it doesn't look as amazing as well in a swatch as what it does on the lips at least for my skin tone like I remember when I swatched this I was like oh okay and then you put it on and it just transforms into this absolutely perfect like nudie brown color for me and my skin tone and I just love it and the packaging and everything about this just brings me so much joy I love it it's more long wearing than like your average kind of like lipstick but sorry that's Calanthe Orchid not that one <laughs> Um, it's more long wearing than say like your average lipstick, but it's not as long wearing as like a full matte liquid lip. So just keep that in mind. Next up in lip creams, we have the Sigma lip creams and these have just been incredibly slept on, like incredibly slept on. These are so good. I'm going to swatch my favorite shade, which is Begonia. And I've used this in quite a few videos as well. Very similar to the Clay de Po formula actually. So that is a begonia, but they also have, they even have more than just these as well. They go like a full shade range. So there's probably like your equivalent of a nude color in your skin tone available to you in their shade range, I would say almost beautiful, like hydrating on the lips, long wearing, doesn't bleed or anything like that. I mean, you will need to reapply. It's not like, you know, your full matte formula where it's going to just like stay put all day and, and not budge, but it's, it's going to last a pretty decent time, which is awesome. And they're really quite an affordable price. Sigma's usually on sale. Don't sleep on them, trust me. The only liquid lip formula that I have ever tried that I love is the Urban Decay Unlocked, Vice Unlocked, I think. Is that what they're called? Vice Liquid Lip, let's just call it that. So I started with the shade Textum and then I got Unbreakable. And I know that these aren't new to the US this year, but they were new to Australia this year. We only got them this year. And these are really, really good liquid lips. So that is Textum and that is Unbreakable. And these really do for me, once you put them on, they dry down. And I found even through my coffee consumption, they do not budge all day. They don't give me ugly butthole lips and they don't dry my lips out to the point where I just want to rip it off and like bathe in lip balm because that's what I normally find with liquid lips. And they're also not like a crazy matte finish. They kind of like don't dry down to like a full full matte. I don't know what kind of wizardry is in these, but these are definitely the only liquid lip formulas that or liquid lip formula I should say that I will personally wear. I, I love them. I missed a lipstick, the Fluorasis lipstick. So this one is in the shade terracotta romance and like look at this right one look at that packaging it is gorgeous and then you push it down and it comes out and you can get like different shades and like put them in here and the shades come with a lid as well so you don't have to like buy multiple of these and you know what I mean uh, also look at the bullet is that not a work of art it is absolutely insane and then this formula and this shade oh, look at that shade isn't it beautiful? I absolutely love it, especially in that like autumn fall time. Oh, it is gorgeous. Or even like in summer, tap this over your lips with like a um, sparkly, like nudie, goldy gloss. Oh, fire. Absolutely fire. I really, really have been impressed with the Fluorasis products this year. In fact, they just sent me some more in PR to try out, so I can't wait to try them. But the packaging is so luxe and gorgeous, but the actual formula of these is so good. Now that one's more of like a matte, soft matte finish, I would call it, but it's quite long wearing as well. So it's gonna be more long wearing than like a satin finish, um, but it's still very fuss free to put on and wear. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm not gonna swatch the glosses that I'm gonna talk about because a, a swatching a gloss I just find really redundant. They're all kind of like semi-clear. These, I guess, I, I know they call them the central shine lipsticks from NARS, but I find these to be more like kind of a really tinted lip balm and I really love them. So I got two shades. I got Breathless, which is like a nudie brown or a light brown, I should say, and then Dolce Vita, which is like a pink. 
and I again went through a real moment wearing these and I do wear these quite a lot usually you don't see them on my channel anymore to be honest because they live in my handbag so because they're like this easy fuss free like kind of lip product where if I want just enough color on the lips to look a bit more put together but I don't really want to go like the full like lipstick or anything I just throw these in my bag and then I can put them on like a lip balm and they look absolutely lovely so I really really enjoy these products I think out of the kind of like tinted lip balmish type products that have come out this year they've definitely been my fave the lisa aldridge lip glosses okay i tried dancing rose for the first time this year and then now have finished the year with three every time i do like a lisa order or a uh selfridges order i pretty much add a new one <laughs> to my cart because they're amazing so that's a fair and a fair if you're looking for like a brownie kind of gloss get a fair it's perfect and then i also have silent sun and dancing rose and i absolutely love and adore these you know how um you'll always hear people talk about how incredible the lisa aldridge lip gloss formula is and you're like mm, how amazing is it really it is it's like the perfect combination of a lip gloss and a lip oil in the best way possible so it really gives you that effect of a lip gloss, but it really gives you that comfort and wear of a lip oil or a lip balm, and it's amazing, and I love them. They're my favorite glosses, hands down, period, in my entire collection, truly. Another gloss that I can't get enough of at the moment, and you guys keep commenting on, is also the Clay de Po gloss in Mokara. It's, uh, I guess, like a bit more of a sparkly gold one. Absolutely stunning, really, really beautiful. It has a bit more of a kick to it than, say, Silent Sun from Lisa Eldridge. So if you're looking for that, then you might want to go. This one it has a little bit more of a glittery kick to it. Really comfortable still on the lips, but not as much of like a lip oil type feel as what the Lisa Eldridge one is. But I love this and I love it with the Calanthe Orchid. They make this like perfect baby. Three lip oils, like true lip oils that I've fallen in love with. The first one is the Say. I got the shade Dip, which is like this nudie one. And I don't know if you can see... I didn't realize how much I've been using this. It's actually almost nearly finished and I only just recently got this. I love this. I will hands down repurchase it. I love the shade of it and I love the formula of it. It's so comfortable on the lips. Like, yeah, even when I like look down the little straight bit, there's like hardly any left in this. Great, great product. Also the Milk Odyssey Lip Oil. I got the shade Work Trip. It's like this beautiful pink. I love this as well. I'm going to say that I do love the Say one just a touch more, just purely because I've actually had this longer, but I've nearly used this up and haven't used this up. But in saying that, I do really like this and I could see myself repurchasing this as well. It's very nourishing and hydrating on the lips. It has the perfect amount of pigment to it as well. And I like this pink because when I'm not wearing any makeup, especially when I'm wearing like light makeup, adding like this little pink of um, lip oil to my lips just makes me look a little bit more like put together without it being like too much of a tint. And then this ridiculously expensive one, the Tom Ford Lip Oil. Uh, yeah, it's so expensive, but it's like a paperweight and I regret nothing and I've nearly used it up. Like, I don't even know if it will show on camera how much I've nearly used this up. This actually lives on my desk um, at work and or like... On, I work from home, so my desk downstairs. And yeah, that's why this is nearly used up because I was like, oh, this is an expensive product. I'm going to use it. But again, I would hands down repurchase this. Like, I really like it. It's very nourishing on the lips. It has more of like a lighter feel. So these ones feel a little bit like thicker on the lips than this one. This one definitely feels like the lightest possible lip oil you can put on your lips while still being really, really hydrating. And it's clear, so it doesn't show any tint or anything. I super duper love it. Lastly, the Fenty Beauty Puddins. Oh my god, the plush puddings. I got the duo for Christmas, so I have Cherry Barbados as well. That's downstairs, and I can't be bothered getting it. Um, I think these are the best lip balm masks you can get. So this has beaten out my Laneige Overnight Recovery Mask, like lip recovery mask for me. These are so hydrating and like such a nourishing formula. Like if your lips just need some intensive love um, and they're feeling a bit dry get yourself these you will love them i also just love the little applicator like it has the little like twist applicator thing here i don't know i love everything about these but the formula especially they're so hydrating and nourishing on the lips like i cannot recommend the little plush puddings enough and like who doesn't want a product that's called puddin because that's amazing that is all of my lip favorites uh, plus eyeliners, mascaras, single shadows, that jazz hopefully is still here. Uh, let me know some of your favorite lip products from the year. I would absolutely love to know what do you think of my choices. 
Remember, this look is coming up next week as well, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to check it out. And yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. If you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate you, and I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world, and I will see you next time. Bye!